Hello everyone, and welcome to a short video on the Steamworks API. Today the ID that I'm using is Codebox version 13.12, and the compiler that I'm using is MinGW 4.8.1. The first step to using the Steamworks SDK is to create a global variable. In my case I've called this one Steamworks SDK 142, where 142 is my version number. The base folder I've, I've set up here is uh, C drive mingw 4.8.1 forward slash libraries, where I have installed the Steam SDK version 1.42. The base folder is the base folder where a library is uh, is is stored. The include file is the lo the include um, the include field here is for the location of the header files, and the lib folder lib file path here is for the location of the library's lib file. Now, um, this the, this little global variable section here is used in code blocks um, in order to use macros to specify the locations of your libraries on your folder and uh, on your hard disk. And I'll just show you that uh, now. So when I go to the build options of my project. Um, you'll see that when I go to my search directories tab, that I'm that I have this little syntax going on here. This is uh, dollar sign left bracket hash Steamworks SDK 1.42 dot include right bracket. Um, now the first part, the first part here indicates that that is a little macro that refers to the global variable, and the dot include is the little postfix that I use to specify that this is going to be the include path as specified in my global variable. I've got the same thing over in the linker here. The .lib extension there tells the uh, compiler where to look for the lib file. In this case it's going to be our Steamworks API lib file. Now um, I've replicated this between the two different builds of my project which is debug and release. As you can see that there is no difference between either. Now to show you the lib file that I'm using here, um, usually you'll just click add and you'll add steam underscore API for your lib file and that is common between both the debug and also the release versions of the project. Now in order to use the, steam, uh, the Steamworks API, you include the steam underscore API header. Now there's another variant of the header uh, which is steam underscore game server. Um, I believe that is supposed to be .h. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, now, the only reason that you want to use the Steam underscore game server .h uh, header file is when you're building a server um, to, in order to run multiplayer games, uh, etc. Et um, now, if you are including that header, you are not required to call, include the Steam underscore API header because the Steam underscore game server header automatically includes that. Now onto the entry point of our program, um, and uh, wait, just before I do that, let me cover this. Um, I've added another file to my project called steam underscore app ID dot text, um, and the steam API looks for a project in the um, application's path, looks for this file in the application's path, and every app uploaded to steam has an ID associated with it, which is usually allocated by steam, depending on the uh, when you upload your project to the steam repository. Um, since this little project here does not have an app ID, I'm able to simulate it using the steam underscore app ID dot text file. Um, now, there are two main functions for your first, I guess, hello world uh, steam application, and that is the steam api underscore init function, which initializes steam. Now, this function will return false if you don't have an instance of steam that is both in memory and also logged into uh, logged into the Steam system. So if your developer account or your end user has not logged into the in, into Steam, then that function will return false. Um, the final function to be concerned about when you finish using the library is the Steam API shutdown method, which will disconnect and close the clo in, uh, which will free up any resources associated with using the Steam API. Now. I've only got a very simple uh, simple set of instructions here, which is I'm uh, grabbing the Steam Friends object and I'm getting the personal name from the Steam Friends object. What the Steam Friends, uh, well, what the get personal name does is it gets a, it gets the account or get the persona name rather. Um, what it will do is it will get the name of the account that is presently logged in. 
Um, now, if I run this, we're going to get an error first up, and that's because I don't have an instance of Steam open. So Steam must be open and logged in in order to run this game. So I will start a, an instance of Steam, and I will log in. Clearly my username and password will be different to yours. Now if I spelt that correctly. Good, good. Now a couple of ads will come up as they always do. Now this is my uh, little Steam account there. And you'll see in the top right hand corner there I have got uh, Dodgy Software as the name of my company Steam account. Now, when we run the program a second time, the persona name that it should be grabbing should be Dodgy Software, which we will print to screen. So let's run the application. And you'll see that the first thing is starting BrakePad Mini Dump App ID 480. The 480 came from our Steam underscore App ID file, right there. And then you'll see that it prints the text Dodgy Software, which happens to be my user account name there. Now, that concludes this short video. Thank you for watching. And until next until next time, take care.